Today I am at Oxford University, one of the most prestigious research and education institutions in the world. The people who study here go on to do great things. Of the 55 people who have held the position of Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, 28 of them studied here. David Attenborough, Sir Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Niels Bohr, they all studied at the other fancy one, Cambridge. But Oxford, Oxford is old, in fact. When Christopher Columbus first set foot in North America in 1492, Oxford University had already been established for 400 years. But how hard is it to get in here, as a student, I mean? To find out, I'm going to take the admissions test, the entrance exam for Oxford University to study mathematics at an undergraduate level. This is a two and a half hour exam presented to everyone who applies to the university to study maths. It consists of five questions and is marked out of 100. There isn't really a pass mark for this, but to be in with a decent chance of getting an interview, you really have to score 60 or more. So that's where I'm gonna set my pass mark. I'm going to set this exam completely blind, so I haven't looked at any past papers, I haven't looked at the syllabus of what's in this. However, I did do engineering, so I feel like I have a slight advantage over someone who's 17 and straight out of school. So let's see how I get on. Two and a half hours starting now. This is day one, hour zero. The first 40% of the exam is multiple choice, which means no marks for working. You're either right or wrong. The remainder are longer questions with multiple parts to them. I'm using an iPad to write so I can show the answers on screen if need be, but there are no calculators allowed in this exam. It's time. Uh, I, I doubt I'll be back for an interview. <laughs> I don't think I even attempted enough questions to be invited for an interview. Now, to mark this mess, I need someone who knows what they are talking about. And I know just the guy. I'm Dr Tom Crawford. I'm a mathematician at the University of Oxford. And I also do lots of online teaching on YouTube with my channel, Tom Rocks Maths, and also with Numberphile. I'm heavily involved in the admissions at uh, one of the Oxford colleges, St Edmund Hall, which means I actually set some of the admissions exam questions. I have done some of the marking in the past, and I actually do the admissions interviews and help to decide the students that we admit in a particular year to study maths. So let's see how I did. All right, Mike, let's see what you've got for me. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, yeah, all right, that's good. Um, nice, good. I know how to integrate, that's helpful. Uh, that's not right, and no, afraid <laughs> not. Interesting approach, uh, all right, uh, afraid not. That one was painful, that was like three pages. Another guess with a little unhappy face as well. Uh, another guess. A lot, a lot of guessing going on. That's not right. Another guess. Another guess. Uh, Mike, I think this is a correct guess. I think this is a correct guess, actually. Yeah. That was... So, Mike, big moment. <laughs> how, how did you find it? How do you think you got on? So, I actually think I attempted 50% of the exam. Okay. And of yeah. that 50%, I think I got 50% correct. So I reckon I got about 25%. I've I been mean, awful. the multiple choice was brutal. Let, what did I get overall? Overall, okay, overall, you got 37. <laughs> you know what, it's actually a lot better than so, I So yeah, 37%, right. which is pretty decent. Like, I, honestly, <laughs> like, as, a, as, a first, as a first stab, right, this is, this is meant to be hard. You know, this is, it's the Oxford Maths Admissions Test. It's not, you're not meant to just sit down and immediately pass. So I think, there's a lot there that we can work with. It is a horrendous result, but I'm actually really chuffed for that. <laughs> so, you, so you'd see my 37% and then you'd look at my CV and it would say five years of YouTube. <laughs> so I failed. 
with a score of 37%, it is really unlikely that you'd get an interview. Everything in this exam, all the core concepts, are actually covered in high school mathematics in the UK. But the questions here require really strong problem solving skills just to figure out what to do and what techniques to use. This is tough. I had limited time in Oxford. I'd only have the chance to reset one more paper before I left and only one day to learn how to pass it. So, with Tom's help, in a library filled with the musk of centuries old books, I started doing what students do best, cramming an entire syllabus the day before the exam. During our brief break, Tom and I got to chatting. I asked him something I've heard people say a lot. Are there people who are just born with an inability to, to do basic maths? No, it's, it's, they need to be taught in different ways. It might be more difficult for certain people to, to learn maths, but it's, I categorically do not believe that there are people who cannot learn maths. You need to be taught or you need to learn or study maths in a way that makes sense to you. It's a really simple question, but I think one that is quite difficult to answer. How do you get better at maths? I'd, I'd sum it up in practice. I think it's lots of people don't realise that maths is just a skill like anything else. So if you're learning to play football, you're learning to play an instrument, you have to practise. You, you learn the basics, you, someone teaches you a particular drill, you go away and you practise. Maths is the same. So you learn your circle equations, you go away and you solve lots and lots of problems involving circles, and then you get used to using the same thing over and over. And it, it really is essential um, to, to be good at maths and to be more familiar with working with numbers and equations. Just practice, practice, practice. The purpose of this video is certainly not to apply to the University of Oxford or to prove that I am very smart, but to perhaps improve people's perception of maths literacy. Proficiency in mathematics is just a skill like every other skill I've learned on this channel, albeit a very useful one. And if it's a skill, that means it can be learned. If maths is something that you struggle with, whether you're at school or you're in your 60s, you can improve on it. It is just a skill like many others. Perhaps it will help you at work or maybe it'll help you figure out your mortgage payments, but mathematics proficiency can be improved upon, it can be learned. Anyway, back to cramming for this exam. I think this is equal to half C over A. So it's meant to be A over B. So what are we actually doing here? Well, some of what Tom is helping me with is stuff I've just forgotten. Like the derivative of E to the power of X is just E to the power of X. I just forgot that. But really, I needed to get into the swing of working with and manipulating equations again and doing it quickly and accurately. And there is just no substitute for doing it over and over and over. We also worked on exam technique. Sitting the exam blind, I didn't know how the marks were allocated, but once I looked at the solutions, I could see the breakdown of marks. With the multiple choice, you're either right or you're wrong. There's no marks for working, but they are worth a lot of marks. So there's a bit of strategy here. You can quickly eliminate answers that you know are incorrect and speed things up. Keeping track of time is a big one. Two and a half hours for this exam is tight. In this video, I never completed an exam all the way to the end. But the low hanging fruit is in the first couple of parts of each question, so make sure you at least attempt those. By late evening, my brain was fried. There was no more to be done except sleep and hope for a better result the next day. Okay, time for the retest. I feel like I'm ready to score uh, my target, which is 60% or above. Um, what I'm wearing right now is called Subfusk, and this is what um, all students must wear uh, to sit their, ex their exams. The, I'm wearing a uh, commoner's gown, which is what first years would wear, um, and the rest of the outfit is um, dark suit, dark shoes, and uh, dark socks, as is tradition. 
students would be expected to bring their mortarboard hat, that's that square scholar's hat, to the exams, but since they haven't graduated yet, they can't wear them, but they have to bring them with them. Weird traditions. Candidates, you have two and a half hours. You may begin. Your time is up. Please stop writing. Just before we left the next day, Tom had my result ready. So yeah. in this envelope, uh, you've marked it and you've put the result, right? So we're looking for a pass mark of 60. Yes, so there isn't an actual pass mark, but as Mike's explained, yeah. 60 is what we think would be a decent chance of him getting an interview, so. The exams are savage. <laughs> There's no other word for it. Um, it's the time. Um, yeah. The time, it's really tight. It's, if, it, if it's a pass, it's gonna be a 60. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. <laughs> it's a legit 60 Legit, yeah, yeah. You, you, you got 62. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was horrible. That exam really is uh, terrible. 62% passed by the skin of my teeth. By the way, four of those marks were an educated guess. I hope, if anything, this video has inspired you to learn a new skill or brush up on something you'd like to revitalize. If that is the case, then you should check out Skillshare, who are the longtime supporters of the show. They are offering the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description, a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. Skillshare is a learning platform and community with tens of thousands of classes covering, well, lots. In addition to classes in productivity, illustrator, video editing, and coding, I also have three of my own classes I teach for the Rubik's Cube, a beginner's guitar course, and a course about learning in the most efficient way. What Skillshare classes provide over free tutorials online is quality, clarity, and brevity. No more crappy audio and awkward camera angles. The classes are arranged in chapters to allow you to navigate at your own pace and provide accompanying resources like PDFs which you can print out to aid your learning. And all of this for less than 10 bucks a month if you go for the annual plan. The link below will get you a free trial of Skillshare Premium so you can browse around and see if you like it. And that lets Skillshare know I sent you, which helps out the show. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.